First thing I want to talk about is uh, the foreign intelligence warnings about 9-11. Um, some of you may have seen out in back, I have this, uh, this book that has just come out a couple days ago called The Terror Timeline. And this is based on my website. And the material I'm going to talk about today is, is based on what I've done on the website and now is in the book. And everything in there is uh, from mainstream source material. CBS News, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, that kind of material. So I want to preface that everything I'm saying here, everything I'm going to be saying is coming from those kinds of sources. Um, and the first thing I want to start with is a, a quote from President Bush just a few months ago. He said, had I any inkling whatsoever that the people were going to fly airplanes in the buildings, we would have moved heaven and earth to save the country. So he didn't have any inkling whatsoever. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you something I think was probably the most significant thing that came out of the 9-11 Commission, in, uh, and it really got ignored. And uh, just briefly mentioned in one of their staff statements, it said that uh, in the beginning of summer of 2001, Osama bin Laden actually started publicly talking about the 9-11 plot. He would go to mosques and he would speak in front of large crowds in Afghanistan, talking to his followers, talking to local, you know, local people who are coming to the mosque. And according to the 9-11 Commission, um, he actually would say things in his speeches, like uh, in one speech he said uh, that people should pray for the success of an upcoming attack involving 20 martyrs. Um, or another person said uh, that bin Laden told them uh, that the US would be hit by a terrorist attack and thousands would die. So there's this really kind of, you know, very almost open secret about the 9-11 attacks. So another example would be uh, John Walker Lynn. You might have heard of him. He's kind of the, uh, the, they call him the Marin County Taliban guy. He went over there, joined Al-Qaeda. In a matter of days, he learned all about the 9-11 the attacks. He learned that there were going to be all these different, uh, different airplanes involved. Uh, so in other words, it was just a, a very, very widely talked about thing um, in Afghanistan. So then what we see is that all these foreign governments picked up on this and started warning the US. It also says in the 9-11 uh, Commission report that this, this knowledge, this foreknowledge was so extensive that it spread throughout the radical fundamentalist uh, uh, network throughout the world. So people all over the world, including in the United States now, were getting details of the plot months in advance. Um, and this is why, I think this is the main reason why we see now all these governments start warning the U.S. So I'm just going to run really quickly and just tell you some of the warnings that came out. And remember that all of these are mentioned uh, in very mainstream sources, New York Times, Washington Post, this kind of stuff. And uh, none of these, none of the things I'm going to talk about today, except for what I just said, um, but all these foreign intelligence warnings, None of these are talked about in the 9-11 Commission. They've just completely ignored all of them. It's like, it's like you know, it, these reports never happened. So also, all of these things I'm going to talk about all are from three months before 9-11, June, July, August. Um, all these warnings start coming up. So the British, they warn the US. They say Al-Qaeda is in, quote, the final stages of a very serious attack on a Western country. And then they also warn um, that, uh, that an Al-Qaeda attack will involve multiple hijackings. So it'll be a single attack, multiple airplanes hijacked. Um, then Egypt, they warn, and this, is, this to me is the most astonishing warning, um, also in the way it was just completely ignored. It was on uh, 60 Minutes on CBS, uh, just mentioned briefly, and uh, I'll I'll quote it for you. It says, uh, in late July, Egyptian intelligence says it received a report from one of its operatives in Afghanistan that 20 Al-Qaeda members had slipped into the U.S. and four of them had received flight training on light aircraft. To the Egyptians, 
Pilots of small planes didn't sound terribly alarming, but they passed on the message to the CIA, fully expecting Washington to request information. The request never came. So if that's not, uh, you know, we know there were 19 hijackers instead of 20. There were four training on light aircraft. Um, and again, it's not surprising given what, you know, bin Laden was saying to people, and, and we know that Egypt had a, I had a mole in Afghanistan and, and gave other good, good information. So really remarkable that nothing was done. Um, then later, uh, a few weeks later, the Egyptians warned that, that this operation that was going forward were in the advanced stages. And uh, this is according to the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak himself. Um, then Germany. Germany warned uh, that terrorists would use airplanes as weapons to attack, quote, American and Israeli symbols which stick out. Um, then Jordan warned that a major attack using aircraft is planned inside the United States. And by the way, they even said the name of the, the code name of the attack, which was the Big Wedding, which turned out to be the, uh, the code name of the 9-11 attack. Um, Russia. Russia warned that suicide pilots were training for attacks on U.S. targets. And then the head of uh, Russian intelligence later sta stated, we clearly warned the U.S. on several occasions, but they did not pay the necessary attention. And then the Taliban, actually, one of the, the foreign ministers uh, of the Taliban himself was uh, kind of a uh, you know, upset with the other leaders, didn't want the attack to go forward, so he warned that Al-Qaeda was going to plan an imminent huge attack, quote unquote, inside the U.S. that would kill thousands of people. And funnily enough, the excuse uh, in the news reports about why this wasn't taken seriously, as I said, because uh, U.S. intelligence agencies were suffering from warning fatigue. They were getting so many warnings that they just couldn't handle it anymore. Um, even Argentina gave a warning uh, because uh, not a lot of people know this, but there's a little sort of a pocket of Al Qaeda uh, in the Argentina area. Um, France gave a warning. It's an echo of a, uh, of a of an Israeli warning. And I'll tell you the Israeli warning. Uh, they warned. Well, they had two separate warnings. First one, they said. 50 to 200 Al-Qaeda terrorists are inside the U.S. and planning an imminent, quote, major assault, unquote, aimed at a, quote, large-scale target, unquote. And then this is, and actually this is probably the most remarkable warning, is that according to uh, Der Spiegel and some other newspapers in Europe, um, a few months, a few weeks before the attack, before 9-11, Israel actually gave the U.S. a list of 19 terrorists. Now, we don't know if that's the exact same 19. However, the reports specify that four of the names were the same, including Mohammed Atta, Marwan al-Shihi, and the two hijackers in San Diego, uh, Al-Midar and Al-Hazmi. So these are the leaders of the 9-11 plot. And according to Der Spiegel, all these names were given to the to the U.S. government. Morocco gave a warning saying that Al-Qaeda is planning large-scale operations in New York City in the fall of 2001, possibly targeting the World Trade Center. Um, so I could go on. These are just some selected warnings that I've given. Uh, but as you can see, there's so many warnings uh, that, in fact, in the middle of August, Kofor Black, who's the head of the CIA's Counterterrorism Center. He was speaking at a, at a convention of counterterrorist officials in a public venue, and he said, quote, we are going to be struck soon. Many Americans are going to die, and it could be in the U.S. And later on, he said that, uh, he said that the top leaders were unwilling to act unless they were told that the attack was coming within uh, a within the exact day, and here is what they are going to hit. So in other words, he's saying that 
Basically, the leaders didn't care to stop the attack, made no moves to defend the United States unless they were told exactly the day and the location of what the attack would be. Um, and in fact, we can see that the Bush administration did absolutely nothing despite all these warnings. There was uh, uh, one thing that was, I found interesting in the 9-11 Commission hearings is that Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta, who uh, is still the Transportation Secretary for Bush, he was asked, so can you point to one thing that the Bush administration did before 9-11 that sa helped safeguard the U.S.? And he said, no.